What's going on guys, my name is Joe and if you like the content of this channel feel free to subscribe and tell me what material you would like me to cover in the future. In the previous video we covered radiation injury factors and I said that I would explain indirect and direct action. If you recall x-rays are low LET ionizing radiation that cause mostly indirect action. Direct action is possible but not common with low LET. Most effects of radiation are indirect damage also because water which makes up 80% of our bodies is a much larger target than DNA that makes up less than 1%. So what ends up happening is the x-rays interact with a water molecule in what is termed radiolysis creating a positive water molecule and an electron. These two may recombine without any effect or the electron can join a water molecule. So now we have one positive and one negative. These two are unstable and break apart into smaller molecules. The positive water molecule becomes a positive hydrogen ion and a negative hydroxyl radical. The negative water molecule becomes a hydroxyl ion and a hydrogen radical. Now most damage is caused by hydrogen peroxide and hydroperoxyl radicals. But where do they come from? Well hydroxyl radicals resulting from the breakdown of water molecules may combine to form hydrogen peroxide. The hydroperoxyl radical is formed by the union of a hydrogen radical and oxygen. So these two here are the main causes of injury, hydrogen peroxide and hydroperoxyl radicals. Direct action on the other hand, instead of radiolysis, involves rays directly interacting with DNA, RNA, or proteins. It is common with high LET and results in a double strand break. If both of these breaks occur on the same step, the chromosome is cleaved. If this chromosome divides, each daughter cell will receive an incorrect amount of genetic material. So these double strand breaks may result in intra-strand links between two points on the same strand or inter-strand links between complementary DNA strands or entirely different DNA molecules. And this happens because chromosomal fragments have highly active broken ends. They are very sticky. If the ends rejoin without a net change, it's termed restitution. If restitution does not occur and the piece of the chromosome is clipped off, then we have an acentric fragment without a centromere. Dicentric identifies with having two centromeres and results from rearrangement of broken ends. Chromatid aberrations result from exposure post-DNA synthesis when only one chromatid has a break and it only affects one daughter cell, compared to chromosome aberrations where the split occurs early in interface prior to DNA synthesis.